Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Phil Mickelson to the interview room. Phil, you started the day 10 shots behind the lead, and you fired a seven under par 65 to leap into contention. This makes 10 top three finishes in the Masters, along with your three victories. Uh, congratulations on being runner-up today. Well, thank you. It was, a it was a fun day, and you just never know what, what could happen. There was nine holes left to go when I walked off the golf course. I was two behind, and, and John played an amazing back nine. I mean, a lot can happen on that back nine. A lot of good can happen, a lot of bad, and he played some incredible golf all, all week long and, and uh, is a very worthy champion. He's uh, easy to see why he's regarded as the best player in the world, and, and uh, he validated that today. John. Phil, I think, was it in the last 24 hours? You said, there's a 65 in me. You were playing well. Um, it, I, this was one of them. Is there more to come? I, I'm hopeful that that's the case. I feel like um, it, was, it was evident to me that I was hitting a lot of good shots, that I was playing well. I wasn't getting the score out of it. But today was a great day for me to stay present and uh, just keep hitting good <laughs> shots, even after I, I might have uh, had a – uh, mess up here or there, I was able to stay present and keep hitting good shots, and, and I'm hopeful that this kind of catapults me into playing the rest of the year the way I believe I'm playing. I really worked hard in the offseason to get ready. I've been shooting some really low scores at home, and uh, today I kind of let it happen rather than trying to force it, and I had a really good day and, and, um, and made some noise. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, but it was really a lot of fun for me to, to play at this level again, and it's encouraging for me uh, going forward the rest of the year. Mark. Phil, what did you learn about yourself this week and, and just being back at Augusta National, a place that is special to you? How much did that help you get back in groove? <laughs> I think it's uh, not so much what I learned, but I, I certainly have a lot of gratitude to be able to be here and be a part of this tournament, play well, play good golf, and try to take advantage of a unique opportunity that I have, which is to play golf at a very high level at a later stage in life, given that I haven't had any uh, physical injuries, that I'm able to swing the club the way I want to, and then uh, with a little bit of work and dedication to compete against some of the best players in the world um, in some of the biggest stages, and, and that's really what's driving me, and uh, today was a, a very encouraging day. Chris? Well, you talked before about being super present and focused this week. I'm wondering um, why you haven't felt that way in a while, and if you could pinpoint the last time you did. Um, I, I don't know. It's been a while since I have uh, been able to, um, you know, focus the way I want to. I've, obviously, Kiowa was a, a good week, but um, I mean consistently, you know, week in and week out, day in and day out, and it's starting to come. A lot of it uh, is just things that I need to do off the golf course, too, you know, diet, exercise, and so forth, and to help with uh, brain function and things like that, but, um, uh, you know, I've Additives and coffee is a big thing for me. I don't think things I eat on the golf course are a big thing. Like all those things factor in. And um, my brother did a great job on the bag this week when my focus was kind of waning. He would tell me some stories, tell me some some dad jokes, and just <clears throat> kind of got me uh, refocused and more present. And again, I think that's a big biggest challenge for me lately because I feel like I'm executing uh, a lot of shots, but I just need to be a little bit more present. David. Yeah, Phil, I wonder if, over here, Phil, just uh, real quickly, the clubs at 6 and 17, which were both particularly good shots. Thank you. The shot on 6, I drove an 8-iron. It was, uh, I think it was with the downhill playing 169, and we had a little bit of hurt, but I tried to hit a kind of a, what I call flattening the apex of an 8-iron so it flies in flat, and it just uh, drove in there and stuck a couple of feet, which was really nice. And then 17, I ended up hitting a 7-iron, um, and just kind of held it a little bit in that left to right wind and then let it fall to the right and it, it almost went in. Um, those, were, those were some good shots, thank you. Gary. Phil, how much of this was this week, how much of this was institutional knowledge, how much of it was you finding something technically, and how much was it of you responding to this environment which you've always responded to? I don't think it was so much technical because I feel like I've been actually hitting shots like this for, for quite some time. For, uh, but what was happening was a lot, Thursday was the epitome of what happened. I hit a lot of great shots. I had a chance to turn a 66 and I'd turn it into 71 because 
I'd make uh, two or three loose swings. And, uh, but technically, I've been playing and performing really well, but I would just have these few lapses. And um, I think when you come here to Augusta, you end up having this sense of, of gratitude. It's hard not to. Like, this is what we strive for. And there's a, a kind of a calm that comes over you, the fact that we get to play and compete in this Masters. And, and I think we've all been very appreciative of that. And um, I know after missing last year to be here this year, it, uh, it means a lot to me. And it means a lot to me to be a part of this tournament going forward. I love, I love everything about this because it's what I dreamed of as a kid to be a part of. And uh, I've got so many great memories wrapped up here at Augusta. Joy. Phil. You and your brothers have been mentor to John. Uh, did you see a major champion or a master's champion in him when you started talking to him first? And uh, just, just tell us about what you thought of his performance over here. My brother Tim was his college coach for four years there at Arizona State. The first time I played with him, we played Whisper Rock. He shot 62, and uh, I thought, thought I played pretty good, and he, he – gave me a pretty good beat down. So I, I am not surprised at his success. I mean, it was obvious to me at a very young age that uh, he's one of the best players in the world, even while he was in college. And to see him on this stage is not surprising to anybody, but um, it's hard not to pull for John too. You know, he's such a good guy. He's got such a great heart. He treats people so well that uh, I, I think the world of him as a person and as a player, that's obvious how good he is. Paul. Bill, uh, with some of the you know, kind of blows of the last two years to your reputation and image. I, I don't know if you, do you feel like this performance over these four days and the fans seeming to kind of warm to you a bit again, do you feel like this is a step forward to kind of restoring some of the damage or whatever the right word is of the last two years? And, and did you feel like you were carrying separate, the mantle? There's separate issues, mm -hmm. golf and the, um, and the professional golf ecosystem and how that's been uh, handled throughout my career. Two totally separate things. Did you one follow up? Did you feel like uh, kind of carrying the mantle though for for live? Uh, you know, with Brooks was up there, and then you you kind of get in contention. Do you was there a little bit of competition with the the other the guys from the other tour? I, I wouldn't uh, look. I wouldn't look at it like that. I I, I uh, am very appreciative that we're here, that we were able to play in the majors, and I thought it was exciting that this tournament rose above it all to have the best players in the world here and, and, and lost all the pettiness. I thought that was great. I'm happy with where I'm at. I wanted something different um, for a lot of reasons, and I'm getting a lot out of it because as a, having a team environment when I was in high school and college golf, it elevated my game, having play, players to play with, compete with. It brought a great energy and excitement, and that's what uh, this is doing for me at Live. I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it's been awesome for me, and I love it, and um, I'm excited to go go play in Australia, but I don't want to. This shouldn't be. This tournament isn't about where what tour you play from. There's players from all over, uh, many, all over the world, many different tours, and you're bringing the best players against to play against each other here in the majors, and that's what it's all about, and that's what um, the game of golf should be. I mean, there's always going to be and should always be a place for historical events like this, but it's okay to have a little bit of uh, different and variety. Uh, in, in, the, in the game of golf. Adam. Phil, you just mentioned Australia there. As happy as you are with your performance this week, I'd imagine you don't have much time to rest. You need to get on a plane, get down to Australia next week. How rejuvenated do you think you'll be for that event down in Adelaide and, and what sort of reception do you think you'll get down, in, down there? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've, uh, we're, we're excited to go down there. There's a lot of uh, anticipation and we're looking forward to that. At the end of this week, I'm going to meet with some of my teammates. We're in practice together before we get on a plane and head down there and I'm looking forward to that. I also feel like um, this is a great week to kind of give me a boost, give me some confidence, give me some momentum uh, to start playing and competing at, at a high level uh, with my teammates. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that too. And so having a mixture of, of, of this style of golf, old, traditional, historical, uh, majors and then have something a little bit different and uh, a different energy and vibe. Like it, it's been great for me. I love I love the variety. Bill, you've played the new 13th now four times. Uh, what's your view of it? Um, yeah, I think it I think it played kind of the way they wanted it to. Um, I think it played 
the way they wanted it to. So, you know, we were hitting a lot longer shots in. Um, probably could extend the tee a little bit for days like yesterday when, when uh, it's wet and into the wind and you would still have an option to maybe go for it because I think just about everybody lay, had to lay up. But um, you don't really need to do anything different. I think it played the way it was intended. Don't sound as though you liked it, though. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying whether I like it or not. I mean, I, I think it's playing the way they intended it to play. I mean, I like going for that hole. I just couldn't reach it this morning when it was, you know, into the wind and wet. And I liked having a chance to kind of go for it. I think it's what makes that hole so exciting is that risk-reward opportunity. And when it's taken away, uh, nobody really likes that. But uh, it was only taken away one of the four rounds, I thought. And um, so I thought it played... Pretty good. I mean, kind of the way they wanted it. Robert. Bill, do you, do you sort of rue the 75 at this point, or is it just that was a, you know, the, the conditions were so difficult that, uh, you know, obviously your last nine holes were, were, were some of the toughest out there of the, of the week? I mean, I could look back on this and, and, and look back on two or three swings that, that would have made all the difference at different stages in the in the tournament. And this morning was one of those things I just couldn't get it in the hole. I hit a great shot on a 13, had an eight, seven, eight footer and didn't make it. And great shot on 16, eight, six, seven feet, didn't make it. And so there were, it, sometimes you get in those moments where it's just not quite, you're not quite connecting with the target and you're not quite getting the ball to, to go in or where you want it. And then it flips. Somehow you just kind of, it flips like it did later today. So I don't know what I could have done differently um, other than, you know, have the ball go a little bit more in the hole. I mean, I thought, so I don't know what I would have done differently there. In the first round, there's some some swings that I can identify and say that really hurt. Just two more questions. Jay? Bill, um, right here. Did you feel any different coming down Magnolia Lane this year than you have in years past? I would say it would be the same. I get the same feeling every time I drive down. You know that same feeling of um, excitement and and uh, history and tradition and uh, everything that kind of goes through your your mind when you're driving down Magnolia Lane and playing Augusta National. And it doesn't matter if I'm playing in the tournament or if I'm playing a practice round. I get the same feeling every time I come to this place. And I think we all sense what a what a spiritual place Augusta National is for for those of us who love the game of golf and one more thing are, are you going to play in the PGA championship yes okay thank you all right in the back David I feel uh first of all I'm from China English is not my mother tongue so if I say something that might be Offending. I hope you. Uh, Did you go to Stanford by any chance? You have that. No, I, I, I got a, you know, somebody gave you that sweatshirt. Who, who went to Stanford? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. I met you actually. Oh, okay. My question is that on behalf. I'm not a pro media guy. It's on behalf of fans from China. We're just curious about. A couple months ago, there is a joke. About from you about, you know, a match, possible match between the PGA Tour and the live guys like you, all right? You said, we're gonna finish them right away. And is that kind of a joke or it, it was just you a really joke. mean yeah, it? Yeah, I was just trying to be funny. Okay, thank uh, you. And congratulations on this fabulous finish. Thank and you. you're amazing out there, thank you. Thank you. One, one more question, Ann. Hey Phil, can you talk about the key to your longevity and staying injury free? Um, I would I would uh, give a lot of credit to Sean Cochran, who's been the trainer for 20 years. When we started working together, the idea was to elongate my career rather than to bulk up and try to try to hit it farther. Um, uh, we've added a physical therapist with Gino Cinco, and I've been working on maintaining flexibility and, and all that stuff. But also, when I turned 40 and got psoriatic arthritis, I had to change my diet and become accountable for my overall health and wellness. And so... Uh, that's where the whole coffee thing started. I never drank coffee until then and didn't realize, you know, what a great way of antioxidants intake that is and all, all of that stuff. So I had to be much more accountable to my overall uh, health and wellness off the golf course as well as maintaining strength and flexibility. So it's been a combination of those things. But um, the mindset 
in, in fitness and training is not to bulk up and get big muscles, but it's to uh, create elasticity and uh, flexibility. Well, Phil, with a 31 on the second nine and a 65 today, it was certainly working. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Happy Easter.